All right, there we go. Hey, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, wow, I love your branded room. Oh yeah. <laughs> I see Jane Wilder. If you want to view paradise, just simply look around and view it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, my question for Paul, and, and I love the fact that you've embraced that you you love the 1971 film, and as a huge fan myself, I, I certainly uh, really appreciated all those nods to not just the physical mannerisms of the actors, the spoken dialogue, the music cues, the music, some of the sets themselves. Uh, so I picked up on a lot of Easter eggs that, that, I, that I know as a fan, again, I was just like beaming inside. Are there some Easter eggs that are really kind of embedded in there that I should look for next time or other people should look for? Maybe cameos? Um, can you talk about any of those? We didn't, we didn't go down the cameo route, but there's, there's loads. I think you've picked up on, on a bunch, so I'm just trying to think. There's Scratch That, Reverse It, which is a very Gene Wilder expression, which I don't think is in the book, but it's in the movie. There's all the, every time he goes up, up down some steps, he mm -hmm. comes back up a couple. Yeah. That was something our choreographer threw in. Uh, there's the small prints, which again, I think is from the movie rather than the book. Right. Uh, the villains, Slugworth, Fickle Grouper and Prodnos are all from the book, so. Uh, there's a bunch of things, but I think also what happens to the characters, like we were really trying to, like the way the, 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 the kids are, you know, get their comeuppances in the book, like one of them gets enormous and changes, the colour of her skin goes all blue, and we were playing with that with obviously the Chief of Police's expansion mm -hmm. across the movie, and the, and the way what happens to Scrub It and Bleacher at the end, and uh, you know, the floating off's a bit like the fizzy li lifting drink, and so it's all, it's all, uh, dressing up in, in Dahl and, and Mel Stewart's sort of clothes and taking taking them for a walk. That well, sounds well, weird. <laughs> doing that, by having that now set up in this movie, does that kind of disqualify having a sequel where people would come to the factory and those things would happen? Well, it would be lovely. I, I feel that, I mean, it'd be, we wanted to make a movie that had a beginning, middle and end and felt like a movie on its mm -hmm. own because I didn't want to go, oh, you know, come back for part two. And, and, and I like you know it, it, but i do think there's lots of backstories about willy wonka in the book and the and both movies and you sort of feel there's there's kind of a there's plenty of material if we're lucky enough this finds an audience and resonates with people then it would be a dream to revisit find out what's happened to noodle she's Can't uh, wait. she's gone off the rails <laughs> <laughs> thank you